Welcome back, I'm Ray Ortega. Today I'm gonna to take a look at the Behringer Xenix Q802 USB mixer for podcasters. All right, so this mixer isn't specifically for podcasters only. I'm just gonna take a look at it from the perspective of a podcaster. And it does say on the box, interestingly enough, it does mention the word podcasting. So that's cool, that's progress, right? So the Q802 is another in the line of sub $100 mixers, sub $100 US that I've taken a look at. And this is the uh, most fully featured mixer of the group. It has more options, comes with more stuff uh, on the mixer. Of the most interesting things about this mixer for podcasters are definitely the auxiliary send, uh, the preamp, and maybe the compressor knob, and the USB output. Let's start off with some of the negatives that I've found with this mixer. Now it is sub $100, so I don't necessarily expect the best build quality, but the Mackie sub 100 is fantastic. However, you get less features on the Mackie. So the build quality on this, you know, plastic sides, um, really thin aluminum uh, chassis, and you know, I don't know if it's built to last. I think it would be just fine. But one issue I did notice, and I don't know if it's this mixer specifically, if it goes to the cheap build or what, it's just a warning, is the phantom power switch. When you turn it off, the light stays on. It might be specific to this mixer. I don't know, it's the only one I have. But, you know, that may be some indicator of the build quality. However, the components inside perform really well. So, you know, it's a sort of a toss up, but it's sub $100, it has lots of features. That might be one of the risks that you take when you buy a cheaper mixer. Another negative or a spot where they're saving some money is there's no on off switch. So you have to actually unplug it to turn it off. And that can be a pain. It also has a weird plug that looks like it's from the 90s, but it might be balanced, so it might be grounded well. But anyways, yeah, no on off switch. It would be nice to easily be able to turn it on and off, but they are saving some money there. Also, the small range of the meters on the mixer. I mean, you have minus 20 and then it goes to zero. Then you have your headroom, uh, plus six and a clip light. There's only four LEDs here. So anywhere between minus 20 and zero, you're not really gonna know where you're sitting on your levels. That's okay because we are gonna get it to uh, zero. And you know, if the loudest parts of our speech are sort of hitting that zero, then we're fine. But it's nice to be able to tell exactly where you are really close to where you are in the, uh, in, the, in, in the range on the meters. This one, it just has limited numbers. It's not a deal breaker, but that's one of the things you get maybe on a, on a nicer quality mixer. But other than that, those couple issues that aren't for me deal breakers unless, you know, like the button, uh, you know, if buttons start not working, that is a deal breaker. Obviously there's some manufacturer warranty on this, but those are the only negatives that I have uh, most of the things that I have to say about this mixer are good. I mean, there's not a lot to it, but there is more to this one again than the other mixers we've seen in the sub $100 mixer range or shootout that I'm doing. So the best place to start, of course, is the preamps because the only reason you're seeing this is because the preamps are good. If they're not good, uh, it's no reason to go forward, right? So the preamps for the XLR connected microphone channels uh, goes up to 60 dB. And that's great. That's a lot of um, that's a lot of gain to push most microphones. The Heil PR40 I plugged into this does fine. The ATR2100, uh, both of those need almost the full 60 dB, but you can put it up there. You get the level that you want, and it's clean. And even when I turn this up all the way, the mixer itself is not adding any noise to the noise floor. Of course, your microphone's open more, your environment's gonna add noise, but the mixer itself, if you're hearing noise or hiss, it's not coming from the mixer, at least not this one, not when I turned it up. So I was impressed with both of these preamps. I put microphones in each one in the demo uh, audio samples that I did, which you can see in the link in the description. Also, all the gear that I'm talking about is in the description, so check that out. But I put them both in, cranked them both up, and they sounded fantastic. So obviously, if you're going to do uh, interviews on Skype with a mixer, 
the way, one way to do it, especially on this level, is that aux send. You need an auxiliary send uh, to do the mix minus setup. This gives you one. Okay, so if you're gonna have one Skype guest, or you could have more than one Skype guest, it's just not gonna be multi-channel, that's a whole other thing. But you can do uh, your mix minus with uh, the single mix minus, and you have that on each of your channels here. So that's a big plus for podcasters. Also nice is the USB connection. Uh, this is the only, I looked at four different mixers, the Alesis had USB, but uh, the preamps were noisy, so there's no reason to move forward, as I said. This has USB connection, so if you need that, it has it, right? So if you're gonna do this, you could you know, connect your aux in to Skype, and you could then put in the same very computer, you could send the USB out to some recording software and record the whole thing. Okay, so you've got your mix minus for Skype, and you've got all the channels going in via USB into your recording software. Definitely unique to this mixer compared to other mixers, but a lot of Behringer's have this, is this single knob compression, and you can simply turn this up and add some compression to your audio. I typically don't like to do that when I'm recording uh, the raw audio. I'll do it in post-production, but if you're live streaming or you're doing an interview that someone else is recording, you may want to add in some compression. Of course, that can add noise too, so a little goes a long way. But it has it, and it works fairly well. I liked it. It's really easy because it's single knob. It does the threshold, uh, ratio, makeup. It does makeup gain. It does all that for you. So single knob compression. It's interesting. Also on the Q802, you have your two mic channels. You can have two people in studio on professionally connected microphones, XLR microphones, and you've got two different stereo channels. So that adds more functionality uh, for your podcast setup. And to come out of this mixer, you've got like five different ways to come out of it. Uh, it six if you count the headphone output. So it's got a headphone with a volume control, that's nice. Uh, you've got the control room out, the main out, the uh, effects send, you've got the RCA out, the tape out, and the USB. So a whole ton of options for getting audio out of this mixer. And again, just gives you more flexibility, so that's cool. And pretty standard, but you have your three band EQ with your low, mid, and highs. So that's nice to have if you wanna make small adjustments, but I usually leave them in their detent position, which is straight up and down. You'll feel that little click there. And then I do my EQ in post-production, but it all depends on how you're doing yours. Having EQ might be a helpful option for you. So if you needed all this functionality, at least all that you're getting here for under 100 bucks, the USB output, the uh, auxiliary send, if you needed all of that, for your podcast setup or whatever setup you're doing, then this would probably be the way to go if you're trying to get in in a mixer underneath $100. If quality was the bigger issue, at least quality of the build, then the, the Mackie is gonna beat this out in my opinion. But if you use the uh, smaller 402 and it doesn't have an auxiliary out and you need to do that setup for a mix minus, then that's not gonna work for you. But you can look at the mix series as well from Mackie uh, to get your aux end. But again, if you need all the stuff that this mixer has, then I like it. Mainly because the preamps are clean and it works fine. Again, whether that's gonna hold up in a year, uh, I've heard plenty of people who have these cheaper Behringer mixers and they're doing just fine with them. So, something to think about when you're considering this mixer, but overall, I do like it. All right, I will uh, see you next time. Let's take a look at the Behringer Xenix Q08.